Can you talk about the, the turnovers in these last two games? That's kind of uncharacteristic for what the, the yeah. DNA of this team has been. Yeah, yeah, all. yeah. It hasn't been an issue a whole lot for whatever reason. The last few weeks, they had, you know, really five. Dak threw, threw the last one up. You know, that created six. But, uh, yeah, they're, they're coming, and they're coming in some different various ways. And so uh, hopefully you address them individually each, each play. You address them and then uh, hopefully move forward. And, you know, I don't think it's something that's going to be detrimental to us. It's a uh, it's an issue that you know popped up for a couple of weeks and hopefully we move past it. Is it an inherent risk when you're trying to get the ball down the field more that you're exposing yourself to interceptions? Uh, I don't think so. I think all of them kind of had some unique circumstances, you know, different things where we can clean up uh, from you know the receiver, the quarterback, all those different things, play calling. Uh, there's plenty of things that you can clean up, but uh, you know, I feel I feel like we've been doing a really good job of it the first few weeks, and you know, just popped up, you know, this really this last game, and then the Saints game was fumbles, so uh, they're kind of independent of each other. A couple of those long receptions for Amari were on double moves. Yeah, that's been something that he's been successful with throughout his career. What makes him yeah. uh, so efficient in that specific? Area. Yeah, no, he's really good at him. I think uh, I think it's really his ability to play at the line of scrimmage and his burst out of it. You know, people gotta take that take that route because uh, how how quick he gets out of his uh, breaks, and so uh, you know he's done a really good job of it. Kelly, I know you're only concerned about the Jets' defense and not the Jets' offense, but as a former QB yourself, what was your opinion of Sam Darnold coming out? Uh, of him, oh, of him coming out, uh, well, uh, coming out of the draft, player, yeah, yeah, player, no, really good, really, really good, yeah, 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 that was the one, that was last year, so, uh, yeah, he was really, really good, I thought, I loved the guy, you know, I thought he was a big-time player, he's going to be a big-time QB in the league, so. Is there a balance a quarterback has to go between playing the game in a shell and just kind of being careful and not uh, making mistakes and, as opposed to being indiscriminate and just taking chances that Dak is has shown an yeah. ability to not be the guy who's just yeah. indiscriminate with his throws. Yeah, he's always done a great job. I think you know, there, there's one that certainly he wanted back as far as uh, you know the one to uh, Randall, but uh, those things are going to happen, and you know you don't want to you don't want to let anyone start playing passive. That you, you're not going to be able to play quarterback very well if you're playing passive, throwing just check downs and all that sort of stuff. You know, we acknowledge it, we move on, and uh, I think he's in a good place. But is he is he with where he is in his development? Is he? making some throws that he wasn't making earlier in his career because he's developing as a quarterback and it's a it's a good risk reward for him. He has some options out there. Yeah, yeah, cer have. certainly he's doing a really good job. We got some receivers that can really get downfield, so let's take advantage of it. Uh, he's had a lot of success doing it, you know, last year and this year certainly and uh, you know, you got to continue to embrace that and you know there's little moments where hey, you're going to learn from it and we'll move on. How does the health of your tackles influence the way you put a game plan together? Yeah, you're just aware of it. You know, obviously, you know, you kind of got contingency plans and all that good stuff. And, you know, if you run into a little bit of an issue for whatever circumstance it is, you know, hopefully you've prepared for that. But, uh, you know, I think we got some good guys. There's a reason Cam, we signed Cam back. And then uh, Brandon's obviously been a really good guy for us since we got him here this offseason. So, uh, obviously, you like Tyron LC. Those guys are guys for a reason. And uh, we're fortunate to have the other guys as well. Is it too simplistic to say, like, maybe we keep this in the playbook this week because we don't want to put, the, you know, a Brandon Knight or Cam Fleming in that situation. Uh, I think you f feel really comfortable with the way they're playing right now. Uh, when Brandon went out there in uh, the Green Bay game, I think he did a phenomenal job. And at the same time, you got to acknowledge things happen in games. You start running into little uh, little hurdles, and you got you got things to account for that. But uh, they did a great job last week. That's not an ideal game script for an undrafted rookie to make his NFL debut when you're trailing. Yeah, and it's very predictable. Pass pro every single play, and yeah, no, he he did a really good job. I, I, I think everyone was really happy with him going in there. Challenging circumstances are two really good edge rushers, and uh, to do what he did, you know, you feel really good about it. Calvin, you all scored 21 points late last couple minutes of the third quarter into the fourth. Yeah. What was working then that you can try and translate across all four quarters of the game? Yeah, no, we just, uh, I think everyone was playing fast, and, you know, that was a credit to our guys. They didn't give up, you know, plenty of times that game can turn into an ugly, you know, it's 31 to 3, it can turn into some 45 to 10 game and look really ugly. And they fought back. They gave us certainly plenty of opportunities as it went down. And, uh, you know, we just certainly we turned the ball over a few times early in the game and uh, got stopped on a couple third downs. And we kind of got our momentum back, and hopefully we can continue to build on that. As you've examined it, how do you feel about the way you've used Zeke? Yeah, yeah, he's done a really good job. Obviously, you know, you don't game plan plan on throwing it the whole second half of a game. Kind of ran into a challenging situation last week, so uh, certainly you would have loved to have him run the ball more last week, but the circumstances dictated something else, and so uh, he's done a really good job for us. He's done a really good job, and we'll continue to 
you know, build on all that good stuff and uh, get on the ball as much as we can. Now, Amari said that he loves seeing man coverage when we talk to Michigan. That's his favorite. He kind of just challenges. Yeah. As a play caller, when you see somebody like how they were trying to last week, man up one on one on Amari, yeah. what is that like for you? That's got to be yeah. a pretty good Yeah, Amari likes it. I like it. I think everyone likes it from a passing game perspective. And obviously, they have, they have some really good corners. They've had a lot of success, Green Bay, playing man. And so, uh, fortunately, you know, we got guys like Amari and MG and those guys and Randall and all the guys who can take take advantage, hopefully, of some one on ones when they get the opportunity. And so, uh, you know, they're able to. You know, obviously, we would have liked it to maybe be in the first half, get ourselves in a better position. But, uh, you know, we took advantage of it and uh, they obviously did a really good job. What sort of principles do the Jets present in terms of man versus zone? Yeah, they got a nice balance. I think they do a really good job of kind of balancing out and uh, they got a really good balance to their defense. You know, they. Uh, they, they pressure you just enough to keep you keep you concerned about it, but they play a little bit of man, play play certainly some zone, and uh, they do a really good job of it. You know, understanding. Oh, yeah. sir, understanding this is a broad statement. Do do most quarterbacks kind of fall in the category of you're cautious by nature, and you you need to stretch to take be aggressive and take a few more chances, or you like to take those chances and you have to be reined in a little bit. I mean, is everyone? Yeah. Quarterback somewhere on that scale, one or the other. I guess maybe. Uh, yeah, that's a good one. Uh, yeah, I think everyone's a little bit different, and, and circumstances dictate that too. I think it's natural to, if you're a quarterback and you throw a couple picks, it's natural sometimes. You know, maybe you start wanting wanting to make up for it, or you uh, start being a little bit more passive, start taking check downs. Hey, I just don't want to screw this up anymore. Uh, I think Dak does a really good job of just kind of cleaning his head, moving on, keep playing, and uh, you know he's obviously done that for quite a few years here. When you were down 31-3, what's going through your mind as a play caller, and does that change? Do you say, okay, I'm going to cut this part of the script because? Yeah, obviously it, it limits a lot. You know, we got we got to score fast. We're probably going to throw the ball for the most part, and uh, hopefully we got to score fast and you know get ourselves back into this thing. You're around Calvin Johnson up in Detroit. You're around mm -hmm. Des here for your first as a teammate. Yeah. To see what Amari's done in a calendar year, uh, how any. Comparisons yeah. between those no, guys. It's really impressive. They're all very different players, but uh, they're all very uh, impactful. You know, when you think of a number one receiver, those are the type of guys you think of. Those three guys, they've obviously done tremendous stuff in this league, and we're fortunate to have Amari. I think Amari and Michael are both top three in receiving yards per game in the league right now. Is that unusual to have on your team? And what does that mean in terms of how you can threaten defense? Yeah, we feel really good about him. It was really good to uh, get Michael back last week. I think uh, moving forward, we'll be able to have those guys get Randall back in the mix still and all the other guys that we have in the passing game. So uh, we feel fortunate to have all those guys and uh, hopefully we can build on what we've been been building on. How's Blake Jarwin different from Jason Witten? Yeah, Blake's obviously got the, you know, he played receiver so, so much in college and, uh, you know, he certainly got some of that receiving background, but I thought he's done a really good job of kind of becoming that tight end who can go in the line, block, block edge rushers, all that sort of stuff. And, uh, you know, obviously they present uh, different things. You know, one's probably a really crafty vet. You know, Blake's a little younger, obviously, and uh, so hopefully he can use both of them. He's had a few interceptions that he hasn't had in the past. They were about him running it in and, and not playing it loose and playing more careful. Yeah, I think I think that's natural. I think he's done a great job of uh, just kind of cleaning his mind every time. You know, all of them are kind of independent uh, situations. You acknowledge it. You say, "Hey, could have done this better." From whether it's play calling, maybe he wants to take back a throw. Uh, maybe we can help on the route. Whatever it may be, uh, we took a look at him independently, and I don't think we uh, don't think we need to drastically change because of the circumstances the last few weeks.